Hello everyone, welcome to our webinar today, introducing GECC's new decree 248 for overseas food producers registration. So a few months ago, GECC has announced its new regulation for registration of overseas food producers, which will come into force on Janu January the 1st, 2022, and will be replacing the old AQSIQ decree 145 of the same title which has pretty much become one of the breaking news of the year, especially for the importers and exporters involved in the China international food trade business. I'm Anthony, your speaker today, compliance consultant from GECC Registration Service Organization, where organization is established under the official rules and regulation, and is dedicated to provide our customers with one-stop professional registration solution and other relevant services. If you have any suggestions or questions about our video, you are always welcome to contact us through our official email, gacc at foodgcc.com. So for today's video, we will generally guide you to go through the whole regulation, mainly focusing on the six points which are listed here, as you can see. So hopefully by the end of this video, you will have a brief and general understanding of what the whole regulation of registration administration is all about. Um, why do we have to get registered? Uh, how do we obtain registration with GACC? And what are the requirements and conditions in order for our to get registered? So first of all, let's take a look at this legislative basis. So as, as some of us may have already know, GACC is in charge of the registration of overseas food producers. And as we can see here, GACC Decree 248 is formulated upon several laws and regulations, including food safety law, law of import and export commodity inspection, law of entry and exit, animal and plant quarantine, and all of the implementing regulations. And of course, the special provision of the State Council of Strengthening Food Safety and also some other relevant regulations, including our GACC Decree 249 that comes along with it. So these laws and regulations pretty much point out the importance and necessity for the overseas producers to get re obtain registration with GACC. Uh, for example, as stated in GCC 249, it is clarified that overseas producers of imported food are required to obtain registration with GACC. And GCC has also included the registration of overseas food producers as a key element of its newly introduced conformity assessment in their new decree 249. So upon all of that, we can see that registration is a compulsory and necessary and crucial steps for us in order to get, gain access to the China market. So what if not registering, some may ask? What if we fail to get registered or we just don't understand the importance of obtaining registration? Well, in accordance with relevant laws and regulations, violating GACC's registration administration may result in consequences as follows. First of all, the immediate suspension of relevant food products import and export, and of course the confiscation of all your illegal income with an addition of a fine up to 50% of the value of your goods. So as we can see here, all these consequences are really something unnecessary. And I believe most of you here agree with me that Rather than letting all those negative consequences to happen, it is much a better and easier way if you just obtain registration and comply, comply with relevant requirements from the very start. So now that we understand the importance and necessity of obtaining registration, let's move back to the regulation itself and take a look at its administrative scope. So in the old Decree 145 of AQSIQ, and there is an implementation list of the overseas producers that are required to obtain registration according to the old re regulation, uh, including producers of five groups of products, aquatic products, meat products, dairy products, bee products, and cubulose products. By the start of 2022, however, since the 
going to be changed in this new decree 248. And when it comes into force, GCC has expanded the administration scope of the new regulation to all of overseas food producers that export food to China, including all the processors, all the manufacturers, all the storage facility, no matter what kind of food you're producing, and no, ma no matter what kind of food you're looking to export to China. But by saying food producers here, we have to clarify that we don't include the producers of food additives and other food-related products, such as food packaging, or raw agricultural material, or food producing equipment, etc. So these products are under the administrative scope of other regulation, and it's not directly applied to this regulation. So for the food products that apply to the scope of this regulation, GCC has also introduced some of the basic requirements for overseas producers, including, first of all, the national food safety management system of the food producers originated country have to pass GCC's equivalence assessment and review, which is detailed introduced in GCC Decree 249. We will talk about in our late uh, we'll talk about it in our later videos. But if you insist, uh, I can tell you that these requirements are majorly focusing on the capacity of the Compton, uh, Compton Authority. Uh, identifying, tracking, preventing, and controlling potential food safety incidents and potential animal and plant diseases. And the second requirement, of course, the overseas producer had to be established under the approval of the Compton Authority and is under its effective oversight. And the, the third requirement is for the overseas producers themselves is that they have to establish an effective food safety and sanitation management system in order to, of course, ensure that their foods that export to China complies with relevant Chinese regulation and national food safety standards. And for those products which have already existed, quarantine protocols signed by their own, signed by the producers, own Compton Authority and GACC, we have to follow the requirements of these protocols, of course. So um, let's move on to the next part. GCC has introduced two of the registration methods in their new regulation. Well, in the old decree 145, AQSIQ decree 145, there was only one clarified way for the overseas producers to obtain registration with GCC, and that is through the recommendation of the Compton Authority. This path of applying for registration still exists today. However, instead of applying for the five groups of products, its scope has expanded to 18 groups of products. So as we can see here, except the five groups of products, some, there were several new groups of products added, including excellent add products, edible greens, edible oils and fats, and etc. All of these products we can see forms a really big share of Chinese people's territory and thus contributes a really a lot to the overall import market in China. So here we also made a list of the required material for these groups of food producers in order to get registered. So first of all, we can see there is a recommendation letter from the competent authority required and also the Compton Authority has to provide a list of the recommended producer along with the overseas producer themselves application for registration. And also some documents such as business, license, business licenses certifying the identification of the overseas producer is also required. And the Compton Authority will also have to provide a statement that all of their recommended producer will conform with relevant Chinese laws, regulation, and national food safety standards. And also, the review report conducted by the competent authority of their recommended producer is also required. And in certain circumstances, GECC may also require some documents related to the overseas producer's food safety, sanitation, and food defense system such as floor plans of the factory or workshop or cold storages, and maybe your processing flow charts 
or has the plans, etc. So here we also made a made a flow flow chart for the registration procedures. So we, as a professional registration service organization, may track the whole registration process and provide any necessary assistance. So for all the other groups of food producers, except for the 18 groups we just mentioned, mentioned before, GCC has also introduced another way for them to apply for registration. They can directly apply for registration with GCC or maybe through the entrusted agents. And the required materials for this application path is also reduced to only three compared to five of the former one. So as we can see here, all the required materials only include an application by the overseas producers themselves. And also, again, documents such as business licenses certifying their identification. Uh, also, a statement, this time by the overseas producers themselves, that they will keep conforming with GACC's registration requirements. So as we can see here, all these materials can be prepared and submitted to GECC or by the overseas food producers or by the entrusted agents, which makes it a little bit easier way than the first path of, of obtaining registration. So here we also made a process chart of the registration procedures. So as we can see, first of all, we have to make sure if the overseas producers or regional countries content authority has passed GECC's equivalence assessment and review. If not, of course, we have to urge them to apply and assist for GECC evaluations. And uh, upon confirming that, we may pr prepare for all these required materials and su directly submit it to GECC, at which, again, GECC may conduct evaluation and review and decide whether to grant grant our overseas producers with registration qualification or not. So in the new regulations, GECC also introduced some of their registration management measures, and there were some highlights we'd like to especially emphasize. So first of all, it's a registration number. And labeling requirements. So as we just mentioned before, upon, upon conducting evaluation and review, GECC may grant the overseas producer that me with the registration requirements with a registration number. So this registration number here granted by GECC or that granted by the overseas producers domestic competent authority is included, is required to be included on both the inner and outer packaging of your food products that export to China. Well, please pay us uh, pay special attention to it because this requirement is quite different from that. Introducing AQSIQ Decree 145, which only requires the, registra the registration number to be included on the outer packaging of the food product. So for the second part, we like to especially emphasize is the registration validity and registration renewal. So according to the new GECC Decree 248, the validity of the overseas producer's registration is going to be five years, which is extended for one year compared to that introduced in AQSIQ Decree 145. So some may want to ask what's going to happen if the overall validity period is due to expire? Shall we reapply for our registration or maybe shall we apply for registration renewal? Uh, and don't you worry about that, because GACC has clarified a window for registration renewal, which is going to be three to six months before your registration expires. So in order to apply for registration renewal, you have to apply through your 
original application path, whether by the content authority or by the overseas producer themselves. And all the materials you need, you no longer need all those complex materials when you, when the, by the first time you apply for your registration. And all, everything you need is going to be an application for registration renewal and a statement. A statement promising that you will keep conforming with relevant registration requirements. So there are also some circumstances when your information changes while your registration is still valid. And according to the new GACC Decree 248, overseas producers, when meeting those, those circumstances, will have to apply for information changes with GACC. So in order to apply for information changes, GCC has also clarified the material you, you are going to need, which includes a table that, that a table that presents your original registered information with your changed information. And of course, some supporting materials about the, your changed material your changed information. So we have to be clear that this information change we're, think, we're talking about here only applies for some small changes and for some really big changes such as the change of your legal representatives, the change of your production site, and your registration number. Your, your, the, your current registration number, please pay attention, it's going to be atomically terminated and you will have to reapply for registration, registration through your original application path. So instead of this way, GACC has also clarified some other possibility when your registration gets terminated. So I, I would like to sort all the circumstances into two major ways. The first of all is when your registration gets cancelled. So when you apply to terminate your registration or you fail to apply or you don't apply for registration renewal when your validity period is due to expire, just like we mentioned before, or maybe you are no longer you are no longer under the approval of your competent authority or legally producing products in your own country, then your registration is going to be cancelled. And for some more serious circumstances, such as when you leave, land, transfer your registration number or conduct other misuse of the registration number, maybe you are found responsible for some food safety incidents or you're detected with serious food safety problems by GACC. Or maybe you no longer conform with the GACC's registration requirements. Then your registration is going to be revoked. So after all of that, what I would, what I would like to say is to obtain registration or failing to obtain registration is not the end of everything. Only when we keep conforming with relevant registration requirements and keep operating with the heart of integrity and social responsibility can we maintain our registration qualification and build up a health business environment for us all. So that's all we have today. Thank you for watching. And again, if you have any questions or suggestions, you are always welcome to contact us through our email gacc at foodgacc.com or visit our official website. And if you find our channel useful, please like, share, and subscribe our channel in order to help more people to see it. Thank you.